So in the glass Photoshop file, we are going to use a shuffle node to shuffle the layer glass crack to the RGB. Because at this moment, the crack that we have is actually, both of the cracks are actually existing on two separate layers. So we need to make sure we shuffle them out to the RGB. So I'm going to actually go into the shuffle menu. I'm going to bring in a shuffle. And inside the shuffle, I'm going to select the gl glass crack layer as my layer to shuffle. Now, for us to use it, I'm also going to, after the shuffle, bring in an invert node. So I'm going to use the tab button to plug in an invert node. This way, I'm inverting my uh, broken, broken crack. I'm also going to put up a grade node, so I'm hitting tab again and put a grade node because I probably will want to grade in some way the glass. And then after all of that, I'm going to pre put a pre-mold. So I'm going to hit tab again and put a pre-mold so I can actually pre-mold the texture uh, that we have in this stream. Once that texture is pre-multiplied, I am going to connect it to the broken glass 3D card and I'm going to view it in the 3D system. Of course, now what we have is we have the 3D card that was the one that we used for the placing and the broken glass 3D card is actually showing up on the origin zero point because it does not have any YX coordinates. It is actually, if I open it up, it is still zero, zero, zero. So we need to position it in the correct place. Now, if I go back to 2D, one thing I do did forget I look at my pre-multiplied as you can see this was not really what I wanted I did I did forget one thing it was my mistake in the invert node you want to make sure that you just invert the RGB not the alpha otherwise the invert will occur to the alpha channel as well and we don't want to do that we actually want it to still still become black but pre-multiplied and inverted only on the RGB so once you've inverted on the RGB You've graded the crack as you would as you would like. Open up the photo frame card that was the reference and open up the broken glass card. And I'm gonna bring in this translate X, Y and the rotations into the new card. So I'm gonna basically click and drag the X, Y and Z into the X, Y and Z of my broken glass. And the rotation X, Y and Z, I'm also gonna click and drag into my broken glass card. Yeah, there you go. So now it's working. So now once I go back to 3D, I should have now the crack in the same position as I wanted it. But of course the crack is way too small. And now at this stage, since we already have corrected, correctly put the crack in the location where we wanted it, we could now uh, basically disable the photo frame card because we don't need it right now. So now let's just have a look at the result by using the merge node that we've put in. So I'm going to put the viewer into that merge node. I'm going to switch into 2D mode. And now, of course, the crack is way too small. So it's just on the little corner there. So what we do need to know to do now is we do need to scale up the crack slightly. So I'm going to go into my 3D card. I'm going to click on it so I can open it up and I'm going to scale it up ever so slightly so we do have a bigger crack. I'm also going to move my crack so it actually fits better into the image. At this stage I'm also thinking of actually rotating my crack in a different way because I do want it to actually look a little more realistic so I'm going to rotate it but I would probably leave it like this. This is all up to you that you can tweak it more, you can make it more realistic, you can make it smaller if you want. But the bottom line here is that we do want for it to move with the camera and be correctly tracked into the footage. But as you can see, just by me scrubbing, you can clearly see that it is working exactly like we wanted it. It is actually not sliding. So now that we have a system, let's just, like I said, we just can continue to put extra things. And of course, this tutorial, of course, is limited by time. 
but um, you can always put extra textures into this scene. We can always go and make new matte paintings to put on the walls. You can make holes in the walls. You could put scratches in the wood uh, of the table. You could put another photo instead of this photo. Uh, you could literally change this room dramatically. That's the whole idea with this tutorial. I'm trying to show you a technique using 3D, tra 3D tracking in Nuke to basically change the entire environment of a room without necessarily having to go to a 3D application. So we can just go in ahead and just like before we we have all the textures up here. So let's pick up the wall.psd and let's control or command X on the wall PSD. And again, like before, let's just make a new section, a new backdrop over here. We can actually copy the entire thing that we have here so far and we can paste it and we can now put the plaster in the wall so again put the merger node into the mainstream put the camera pipe into the camera stream and the plaster wall and of course put a backdrop as well that's important so we keep everything as tidy as possible we could put in a grade node because we want to probably grade it and after that we want to pre-multiply it so it gets pre-multiplied uh, to the image and now that we have the card we're going to pipe it into the new scene that we have so for the plaster hole of course we will have to go back into the modeling part and pick up the wall that is actually the wall of the background of this shot so copy the card 24 which is the wall right copy it and let's paste it just like we did with the broken glass let's paste it here and let's plug it in I'm sorry let's just plug it in into the scene so if we put now the viewer into the scan line render that we have and we swap to 3d we can now see that we have now a, a wall which is the hold wall that we had we have a very tiny plaster wall there so again like before we're gonna open up the wall right which was the modeling wall we can open up the card and also seize the opportunity to call it plaster and we are going to do like before we're gonna drag the XYZ position from one place to another in the rotation as well this way both cards are going to actually be in the correct position. At this stage, of course, since we already have it in the correct place, the only thing left to do is to actually scale it so it actually feels like a hole in the wall. So I'm just going to make it a lot bigger. I'm going to make an 11 of scale at the moment. You know, the, the, the size of it is all up to you, so you can make it bigger or smaller. So at this stage, I'm going to disable the wall right. I'm going to keep it here because I might need it for some kind of reference later on. So I'm going to keep it in. And I'm going to put my viewer connected to the last merge node. This way, when I swap to 2D, now you can see that I have the broken glass and I have the plaster wall uh, texture. Now, of course, we need to position the plaster wall texture a little better. So I'm going to basically move it up like this and I'm going to scale. Now, if you do want the X, Y, and Z to actually be in the middle of the plaster, you can do this. You can actually go into the plaster texture because, as you can see, we have a hell of a, a lot of space around the wall. We can, just after the pre mold put a crop. So we can use the shuffle option and put crop. And now, with the crop open, we can now crop the actual texture that we have there. And once we've done that, we can now hit the reformat sec option in the crop. If we hit reformat in the crop, now the entire image is reformatted to the size of that texture, or better, to the size of the crop. You can still tweak the crop that we had, so we can even make it smaller like this, just like at the limit of the texture. So now I'm happy with this. So let's go into the merge node. Let's switch to 2D. Of course, now the plaster is like humongous, so we're just going to make it a little smaller. And we're going to position it into a place where we feel comfortable that it should be. 
So I'm gonna basically just gonna scrub a little just to see if it's working. Yeah, I'm happy with that place. So again, since we are using the 3D system and we are using the correct position of the 3D cards, you can clearly see that the plaster is not sliding and it's working very well in the 3D track. It is very sharp, but again, this is why I'm actually separating every single element on the merge node. Because since we've separated, you can always bring in a defocus node and just tweak it. So for example, if I bring in, go into the last frame, if I zoom in, you clearly see that the plaster is not, wet, not blurred like the background. So we can just, just before it gets merged, we can, after the scanline render, we can put the defocus node and just tweak the defocus until we feel that it's actually matching the wall. It is also way too bright, so I'm going to also go into the grade node that we put in and I'm going to lower the intensity of this entire section and also increase a little the gamma. So I'm going to basically lower the highlights and increase the midtones so it looks a little more blended into the background. I probably also would like to make it a little less saturated. So I'm going to bring in a saturation node by using the tab option again. And I'm just going to nudge the saturation down so it feels a little more like it's actually part of this room. Now, of course, it is up to you to put extra things. Uh, I am not going through the entire comp just like if I was doing into production because a comp like this in production would actually take several days to actually finish. So now that I'm happy with the plaster, I am going to continue and now I'm going to start putting a few splatters of blood in the table. 